Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England, the nation, Canada, and the world. And now, our pastor, E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. My prayer and sincere hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs, and I'm certain that God is going to do just that. Man, I have so many things that I want to share with you today, but I'm going to just have to go in a certain direction because I can't minister this whole message, this whole teaching to you today, but I'm going to minister the part that I feel God wants you to hear, and I think it's going to be very important to someone listening and watching right now. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Before this program goes off, someone is going to be healed of a disease, a sickness, a problem. Someone is also going to receive financial healing. Someone else is going to also receive emotional healing. But when it's all said and done, God is going to be glorified. You're going to be edified. And I get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. How about that? But I have a, this word, and I need to get into it because it's just, it's just so much to it. But I'm going to just focus on one area so that, because I know, you know, I was at the hospital one day, and, and, and you just see all these sick people. Some people, maybe they're Christians, they believe God, they, they're safe, and other people aren't. But the, the thing is this, is that God is a healer. God is a healer. God is a, make no mistake about it. He was, he is, and he always will be a healer. And today, right now, is your day to receive the healing, the miracle that you need. Not because of me, who I am, or anything about me, but it's because it's who, who God is. I think of this song, the person in the song says, that's who you are, who you are, whatever, ah, who you are, whatever, right? Because God is a healer, okay? We're going to get into that in just a second. But God is good. He's good all the time. We thank God for you. Thank you for joining me. Maybe you're listening right now, W-E-Z-E, 590 AM. Uh, we're on Sunday afternoons at 430. Tell somebody about it. If you're listening right now, thank you for uh, uh, listening. Call us, write us, let us know that you're enjoying the program. And I tell you what, if you want to support it, that's even better. But let us know you're enjoying the program. Tell somebody about it. Spread the word. You can also go to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is E.I. Osborne. Go to YouTube, search E.I. Osborne. You'll find our channel. Several hundred videos there. Should be something that'll bless you. But hey, you can join us on Sunday uh, afternoon at 12 o'clock. My wife and I, we do a YouTube message on Sundays, but we also do a live Bible study message Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock. All right? Uh, but hey, most importantly, I should I throw this in too. Come fellowship with us. We'd love to have you. Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street, Duxbury, Massachusetts, 02332, I believe it is. We'd love to have you come fellowship with us this week. Make plans to come. Make plans. You know, my, uh, some people I know, my sisters and whatever, they always talk about if you make plans to do something, you will. <clears throat> so if you decide right now, I'm going to make plans and whatever, put it on my schedule, then you'll come. And we'd love to have you. And I think you'll enjoy yourself. All right? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word, this opportunity to minister to those that you allow to be listening and watching right now. I pray right now, Lord, that throughout this television and radio audience, you would just bless and heal and save and deliver and set free, Lord, all for your glory and, the, and, and in confirmation of this word, as I know you do and always will. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do and for the blessings and what's going to take place right now. Use us, Lord. Anoint us, Lord, for your glory as we minister to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right? So I want to start with this. Sunday morning, as I was, at some point Sunday morning, I believe it is, I think it was Sunday morning, the Lord gave me this word. I want to start with this word for someone because I don't know how much time you have, how, if you'll be able to be with me to the, for the entire message. I pray that you can because we're going to do something. We're going to do a little, uh, my father used to call it Bible aerobics, okay? He used to say stuff like that. We're going to do a little spiritual Bible aerobics at the end with, with the word of God. And I tell you what, you're going to get the benefits, okay? Now, so in Jer but I want to tell you this, Jeremiah 30 and 17, God says this, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Now, this, the context of this, because I'm not trying to take it out of context and all like that. Yes, the context of this is when God is bringing healing and restoration and so on 
to Judah and Israel. That's the context, all right? It's, it's dealing with the healing and restoration of Judah and Israel and so on. But, uh, 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 God, this, but it's also a word, a rhema word, for someone to, what, to someone today because of what you've been dealing with, the sickness, the problems, the issues, and so on, to you right now, that God is telling you, all right, he's going to restore, for I will restore health unto thee and will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. So that is a word, and, and I, I, that is a word from the Lord to you right now in your situation. Now, I realize that some people, that the area of their healing is physical, but there are some people, it's emotional. There are others who it might be financial because you've struggled, you've suffered loss financially, you've gone through bankruptcy, whatever. But whatever area of healing you need today, if you'll hear and receive this word, believe it, accept it, thank God for it, today is the day when your healing and restoration begins. When the restoration and healing begins of whatever it is you may have lost. Because God says to you right now through this word, I will restore health unto you and heal thee of all, wherever you're wounded, emotionally, physically, financially, wherever you've been hurt and wounded, spiritually, whatever it might be, I will heal thee of all thy wounds, saith the Lord. All right? That's the word from the Lord. If you don't get anything else, I pray that you get that. Now, you know, God is a healer. And I want to read some healing scriptures to you. And we're going to do similar to what we did on Sunday. Uh, 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 and it's not, I can't do it like we did. But on Sunday, here's what happened. The Lord just kind of instructed me to go through some healing scriptures. And that, listen, each time I read a healing scripture, I said, if you believe that and you receive that and you know that's God's word, he cannot lie. And so stand to your feet and give God some praise. Because you have to receive this word. You have to receive it as God speaking to you. Not just, well, he's reading the Bible. No, this is a word from the Lord to you. Psalms 107 and 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. What did he do? He sent his word. Well, I'm just, I'm that messenger that God is sending his word through. It's like if you had a message and you used a messenger service. So the messenger shows up, knocks on the door, I have a message from the, from the president and uh, oh, this billionaire person or whatever, and he wants you to know, the message says, I'm going to give you a billion dollars or have it by tomorrow. You know, you might get a little excited about that, don't you think? Especially if you knew it's a multi-billionaire, trillionaire that could do that. You probably, well, that's what you should do right now. I'm just the messenger. I'm not special or important, but I'm the messenger that God is using to, to send you a word right now it's because you've been praying, you've been desiring, you've been seeking, you've been, you've been wanting to be healed, and God is going to send this word right now through me, all right, to minister to you. You're not listening by accident. You're not watching by accident. It's not a coincidence, right? This is the moment that God has ordained for you to hear this word, and it can, and it can produce the healing, the manifestation of the healing that you, that you desire, all right? So, first of all, I'm going to start. And you know, it's interesting, in Psalms 138, God says, he says, he has uh, uh, put his word, he has exalted his word above his name. See, God understands what, how important it is to have a good name. You know, your name is your, it's not just like your name, like, your, well, I have a good name, my name is Antoine. I'm not, it's not like, oh, that's a nice name. No, your name is your reputation. When he says, <laughs> when he, he talks about in Proverbs, a good name is rather to be chosen than riches and wealth and all, and all that, because it's, it's about your reputation, being, having a good name, being known by your name. So he exalts his words above his name. You know, his word, his, his word uh, represents, you know, uh, uh, keeping his word. And so, but I don't get into that, but, <laughs> but here's the thing. So, 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 you, so God sends his word, and you need to know that this word shall not return void, but it shall, pros, it shall prosper in the thing, uh, and accomplish, shall accomplish and prosper that which he sent it to do, right, right now. If you'll hear this word, and don't just hear it as me speaking to you, but hear it and receive it as God. I'm not God, I'm not Jesus, I'm just the messenger, but hear it as a message from the Lord to you you're going to receive healing right now. Your ankles are going to be healed. Your eyesight, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what you've been told about it. What matters is what God says about it. He has the final say. And I'm going to read you some things that God wants you to know about your eyes, about your ankles, right, about your hearing. And, oh, I'm older now. Well, he renews our youth as the eagles. That's one of the things he promised, Psalms 103. It doesn't say it exactly like that, but who reneweth our youth. So whatever it is, that God is going to give you a word about that problem, that situation right now. Okay, let me go through some of these things with you real quick. I'm going to start somewhere in the beginning, maybe around Exodus chapter 15, okay? Maybe this is a good place to start because this is, yeah, this is perfect, all right? Exodus 15, 
and verse 26. It says, and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, somebody's voice is being uh, 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 restored. You lost your voice, maybe, maybe from COVID type of thing. Maybe it's, it's, it's like a long COVID thing, whatever you might call it, but you, your voice is never fully recovered. <clears throat> but God is restoring your voice right now. Your vocal cords, your voice, the strength of your voice is going to change at, the, at, at, at this moment, all right, <clears throat> as you're worshiping God. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. God says, I am the Lord. That, that's Jehovah Rapha. This is when God revealed himself to the children of Israel as Jehovah Rapha. You know, throughout the scripture in the Old Testament, they, 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 God revealed himself at one time, Jehovah Sidkenu, at, at Jehovah Salom. And so, and different things happened, and that was God that God did, and it was him revealing himself in different ways to the children of Israel. Well, here, all right, it says he, he reveals himself as their healer. God is our healer. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord. So if you're wondering how you're going to get healed, through surgery, medicine, some type of treatment or whatever, God is telling you right now, for you, he's saying, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, if you receive that, if you believe that this is a word from the Lord to you, give him praise for that right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank him. Thank you, Lord, for being my healer. Thank you for being my Jehovah Rapha. Thank you for being the Lord that heals me. And as you begin to thank him for that, he's gonna, you're going to receive the manifestation of that word, that promise that God says, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. You're going to receive the healing from our Jehovah Rapha. Isn't that great? Now, let's go to another one real quick. Let's go to Exodus. Stay in Exodus. And let's go to Exodus chapter 23. All right? God is doing something for someone right now. Exodus 23 and verse 25, okay? Exodus 23, 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I will take sickness away. God telling you right now, he's going to take sickness away from your midst. And you know what's powerful, what's awesome about God taking sickness from your midst? That means not only are you not going to be sick, but none of your family members, your friends, people around you, none of them are going to be sick as well. Because God didn't just say, I'm going to take sickness away from you. He said, I'm going to take it from your midst. Which means, because see, if, if you're not sick, but your daughter's sick, your husband's sick, right? Uh, 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 your grandmother's sick, someone else is sick. Well, then sickness is in your midst. But when he says, I'm going to take it. And if you say, well, I don't know about that. Well, the next verse confirms it, okay? Because he says, there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren, where? In thy land. See, in thy land. So, so when he says take it from your midst, in this case he's saying nobody in your land, no one in your area, in your zip code maybe, right? See, when, when COVID came, it affected everybody, it affected you and everyone around you possibly, right? But God says, I'm going to take sickness from yours. Now, man, that's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. If you believe that and you receive that, give God some praise for that right now. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking sickness from my midst. Thank you, for, thank you for removing sickness from the midst, my children, my husband, my family, Lord, my church, my, my, uh, my, the members of my church. Lord, thank you for taking sickness away from my midst. And listen, as you give God praise, see, you believe it, you receive it, now you thank him for it, right? Now, that's when you're going to receive. That's what we did on Sunday. And I tell you what, we did this on Sunday as the Lord instructed me. And when we were done with these things, I said, who was healed? And different. one person, they moved their hand. They said their hand was healed. Another lady said she was feeling lightheaded and dizzy. She said she felt better. I said, well, stand up, walk to the back and walk and see. And she did that. She said it's gone. Someone else said something about their heart was healed. Different thing, different thing. Because it's just, it's just believing and receiving the word. And it's just following the instructions of the Holy Spirit, right? So then I'm going to give you the next one. Now, each time I do one, I don't want you to have an accident in your car praising God, but to the best of your ability, even if you're driving, start thanking God for his word because he's sending his word to you right now to bring you to produce the healing. The word, see, the word is quick, it's powerful. The word has the power. In, in, in Luke chapter 7, I, let, me see, let me see, I always get this mixed up. But in Luke, all right, it says, as Jesus was teaching, there were different governors and different ones around, and it says the power of God was present to heal, all right? So in, uh, uh, where do I want to go here? Uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7, all right? It's just God sending his word. And man, can you imagine getting a message from God and, and, you, and you, all you have to do is receive it? Man, that's all you have to do right now. And how do you receive it? By thanking him for it, by, by praising him, all right? So in Deuteronomy, uh, I'm sorry, Exodus, where did I go? I'm going to Deuteronomy. Somehow my Bible's in Exodus, 
I want to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7, okay? Somehow I was in Exodus. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 15, okay? It says here, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Not some, not just, well, the big things, the things that are, you know, deadly. No, God says, I'm going to take. He says, I'm going to take away from thee all sickness. Man, all sickness. Right? Now, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but hey, Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you for taking all sickness. I thank you because you're my Jehovah Rapha. You're the Lord that heals me. I thank you that you're going to take sickness away from my midst. I thank you, oh God, that you're going to take all sickness away from me. You're going to take that sickness from me right now. And the Lord will take away from me all, all. Lord, take all my sickness like you said. I give it to you. Thank you for taking that sickness away from me. Man, isn't that something? Let's go to Psalms chapter 103. Psalms 103. If you'll just do this by faith, by faith, by faith, not because of who I am, but because of who he is, because of who he is, because this is his word. This is the word of God. This is the word of the, the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. This is the word of God, our heavenly father, the creator of, of all we see, know, consider, and understand. Is there anything too hard for God? All right? Don't worry about me and who I am. I'm not, don't exalt me. Don't look at me like him. Don't, if, you, if you waste your time looking at me and you say, he, he, gonna, he don't even have on a tie. A, 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 the anointing doesn't need a tie. It's, it's about the word of God, right? So I pray that you look past this flesh and this tie and whatever, no, no tie having, no suit, suit having, whatever man sitting here trying to give you the word and receive. Stop. Don't be distracted by me or anything. Hear the word, receive it, thank God for it, and let God do what he wants to do in your life. You've suffered long enough. You've struggled long enough. You, you've dealt with these things long enough. It's time for you to be healed. It's time. It's time. It's past time. God knows that. God knows you're tired. God knows you're weary. Even the other day, I was praying for some folks. I woke up at about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I, and I wasn't sure why, a little before 4. And I said, well, I'll just stop praying. There were some folks that were, needed prayer, and we were praying for them for healing and so on. And so I just began to start praying for them or whatever. And as I did, I heard this word. I heard this word. It's gone. So I'm praying for certain people, and I heard it's gone. And I said, well, it's gone. All right, well, you know, it's gone. And so, so that's the word also. God says it's gone. You know, it's gone. So whatever it is, check for it right now. Look, touch it, whatever. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. That lump, it's gone. That, that tumor, it's gone. See if you can find it. It's gone. That pain. Sometimes, you know, when you're not paying attention to a pain, you don't feel it. You're watching TV, doing something, and you don't even realize the pain is gone. Well, take a second and see. And you're going to go, oh. Hey, that pain is gone. It's gone. See? Now, the next one I want to tell you is Psalms 103. I'm going to go maybe start at verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits as a, as a, as a covenant child of God, as a, as a person who's in covenant with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, you have some benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Man, that's, that's powerful right there. Whatever your sins and the consequences and punishment of those sins, God forgives them. He forgives them, and according to Isaiah 43, 25, he, 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 he blots them out, and then he forgets. He won't remember them, right? So he forgives all your iniquities. And then it says, all right, then it says, who, forgives, who healeth all thy diseases. Whatever the diseases are, the little things and the big things, the medium things, doesn't matter the size. Whatever it is, God heals all your diseases. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God, our healer. He is a healer, and there is absolutely nothing that's too hard. Look for heart. Lord, I thank you for forgiving me and healing me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and healing me of all my diseases. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me and, uh, uh, and forgiving me and healing me of all my diseases. Man, see, just give God praise. That's all I want you to do. And I've, I'm, I'm believing and expecting for the same result we had on Sunday. And I tell you what, I don't know about anybody who was there, but it was, I thought it was powerful. I enjoyed it. And the results that we saw as people one by one said, hey, this was healed, that was healed, this is different, that's different. Man, you know, and I'm just, we're just repeating that because it works, right? It worked. This is what God instructed us to do. Let me give you another one. So Psalms 103. Mm, let me see. Let's go to James chapter 5. My button is hitting the, the desk here, making that noise. If you hear a little banging sound. All right. So now, clicking sound. In James chapter 5, all right, let me see, how much time do I have here? Uh, James 5 and verse 15, okay? It says, and the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith, the prayer, that, that's praying with expectation. Well, I bet people ask me, Pastor, what's the uh, Bible study? Pastor, what is the prayer of faith? 
oh, you might hear all kinds of different things, and different people look at different translations and all that kind of stuff, and give you these technical, you know, real deep, uh, sophisticated, you know, theological, you know, whatever type of answers. The Lord said to me one day, Lord, what's the favorite? He said, praying with expectation. See, but expectation is faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she had faith. Jairus, the, the high priest, he had faith. Lord, if you come, lay your hands on my daughter. She shall be here. She's, she's going to be healed and she shall live. Expectation. They had expectation. Expectation is faith. When you pray, pray with expectation. Some people pray, they don't expect a thing. They're hoping and, they, and it would be nice. No, they have expect. Some people, they pray, they're expecting something to happen. That's the prayer of faith. Now, what's, what does the prayer of faith do? It shall save. It shall save or heal. Same thing. Save, heal the sick. And the Lord, what's he going to do? Raise them up. And then it says, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Because in some cases, the issue, the problem, the disease, the sickness, you contracted it, you, you created it, you did it because of some sin, something you were doing, right? You contracted this disease, you messed up your lungs, you destroyed your kidneys, whatever you did. You got some problem with your blood, whatever, through, through your lifestyles, with things that you did. And what does God do? So God covers that. He doesn't allow that sin to hinder you from receiving your healing, your deliverance, and so on. What does he do? He forgives that sin. And then what does he do? Raises you up, right? Through the prayer of faith, it saves the sick, and God raises them up. Lord, thank you for forgiving me, for raising me up, for healing my sickness. Thank you for healing my sickness, raising me up, forgiving me of those sins, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for receive. For, and, I, and I receive that right now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, all right? Now, let me give you another one. You know, here's the other thing. So, you know, some people say 3 John 2, all right? And I've heard the theologians, I've heard the deep people, I've heard the people who are more, a lot more educated and smarter than me break this down and try to tell you this is not what it means. God says in 3 John 2, all right, 3 John chapter 1 is only one chapter, second verse. So we just say 3 John 2, right? Beloved, beloved, how we want to pronounce it? I wish, I will, I desire. That's what that means. Above all things, above everything else, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as I soul prosper. Now, you can look at that in different translations. It's might use, it basically t means the same thing, but some people break it down. It doesn't really mean that. Well, I said, I, I've heard that, and I don't know what your perspective is of, of, of it is, taking it out of context, whatever you want to say. But I said, Lord, is that what you mean? Do, do you really want me to prosper and be in health? Is that what that means, or, or, or am I wrong about it? And the thing that the Lord just broke, just allowed me to see was the first word. He took me to the first word in the verse. Beloved. And here's what I understand. Beloved. And here's what I, what I understand is that everyone that I beloved, everyone that I love, that I beloved, that I call my beloved, my beloved, I want them to prosper and be in health. Everyone. Everyone that I beloved. I, my desire for them, my wish, my hope for them is that they prosper and they walk in health. So if that's my desire for my beloved, that's God's desire for his beloved. And here's the good news. You're part of that beloved. You're one of his beloved. Right? And God wants you to prosper and be loved. Lord, thank you. I thank you, God, that you want me to prosper and be loved. I receive that prospering. I receive that help. I walk in divine prosperity. I walk in divine health because that's what you desire. That's your will. That's your plan. That's your purpose. That's your desire. That's what your wish is for me. And I receive that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, right now, check. See if that lump is still there. Check yourself. If you're by yourself, go in the bathroom. If you're with some other people, but check. Pull over. Don't check while you're driving. I don't want you to have an accident. Move that ankle. See how your ankle feels with that. Stretch your arm out. See if that elbow still hurts. Move. See what you, anything that you couldn't do before. Close that one eye. See if that eye, the vision is getting better. Hold that ear. See if that hearing is getting better in that ear. Whatever it is you couldn't do. You know, some people, they turn their head and they got a, a noise. Their, their neck makes noise like it needs to be oiled or something like that. Your neck, your neck needs some oil and you just received it, the oil of the anointing. That's what you just got. And that neck, I guarantee you, that popping, that, that noise in your neck is gone. Bend over. See what you see. What you, lift that leg. Move that knee. See what God has done. Because as you have been praising him and worshiping him, God has, has, has manifested the healing that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, purchased for you. It's yours right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for this word and those that you've allowed to be here with me to receive it. Uh, uh, and I just thank you, Lord, for the manifestation of healing that's flowing throughout this radio and television audience right now. In Jesus' name, amen. The most important miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. So if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sin, say this with me right now. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe he came, he died, 
He raised him on the third day. I believe he's coming back again. So forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with the manifestation of the gifts and the fruit of the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved, you're born again, you're on your way to heaven. And I tell you what, I'd love to see you in time. But if I don't see you in time, I'll see you in eternity. Come check us out. Come see us. Uh, Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street, Duxbury, Massachusetts, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We'd love to have you. And I need you to call me, write me, come and tell me what Sunday morning, the miracle that you've received through this, through, through this message that God, so that we can give God praise uh, with you and know what God has done through this word today. Thank you for joining me today. And I got to close and remind you, Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 508-746-4085. If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at The Time Is Now, P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you.